What makes a will invalid? Because your will is your final act, make sure that it is valid so that your wishes are carried out to the letter. Avoid the common pitfalls indicated in the video to ensure your document is ironclad and that courts don't invalidate it. Keep in mind that creating a will allows you to decide what happens to all of your belongings and assets after you're gone. But state courts follow a specific process to make sure things were done in according with specific rules. Therefore, your will acts as your last message to your loved ones, which means you want to make sure your will is beyond dispute. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka. Let's roll. I want to talk to you about, today I want to talk to you about a few things that could make a will invalid. Number one, creating a holographic will. What is a holographic will? It is a handwritten will without any witnesses. Some states consider this to be a valid will, while others do not. So if you really want to create this kind of will, I'm talking here about a holographic will, do your research to find out whether it is considered valid in the states where you live. Legal wills must be in writing. Only about 25 states recognize handwritten or holographic wills. So this type of wills must be written and signed in the handwriting of the person drafting the will and, in some states, dated. An oral will, also called a non cupative will, is accepted by a few states under limited circumstances, such as on your deathbed. Remember though, that whether you have a holographic will, a non cupative will, or a standard will, the body of a will always should include a few components. For example, the names of the individuals that you are bequeathing your asset to, such as your spouse, children, and friends. If you are excluding someone from your will, include a statement to that effect. The name of the guardian for your minor children. So this, the name of that person should also be in your will. A list of assets and instructions for their dispositions with a few caveats. For example, if you own property as joint tenants with the right of survivorship, the property passes to the surviving owner after your death. Likewise. An insurance policy passes to the de designated, designated beneficiary regardless of your will. The name of the executor and a, and a backup, that, that backup is called alternate. So you need to have also that in the, in the will. So quickly recap, the body of a will should have the names of the individuals that you'll be quitting your asset to, the name of the guardian for your minor children, a list of assets and instructions for their disposition, and the name of the executor of your, your will, as well as an alternate. Remember though, and this is something that we really, we have seen in our research here, is that video wills are becoming popular. However, please always reach out to an attorney before making a video will because not all states recognize them at the moment. Generally, a video will supplements a written will. Mistake number two, this is the second element that could invalidate a will, not having the proper witnesses. If you remember earlier, I was talking to you about the fact that you need to have witnesses to validate a will. Most states require that your will be witnessed by two or three people over age 18, so you need to have adult witnesses. In most states, these people must not only see you sign the will, but they also must be able to recognize that you are of sound mind while signing it. In other words, you should not be incapacitated. You have to have all your faculties, all your mental and physical faculties. It is therefore great and recommended to avoid having any beneficiaries or the executor of the will act as witnesses. That's what legal experts are telling people all, all over the country. So you don't want to create some kind of conflict of interest there, right? So you want the beneficiaries not to be in the same room. The witnesses need to sign the will to indicate they witnessed it. And the, the documents may then be notarized. It needs to be notarized. So you want to always check when it comes to estate planning and the, the, the probate process. This is something done at the 
state level. So you want to check your state's laws about witnesses and wills to make sure that you are meeting all your requirements when you execute your will. Another thing that you have to be very careful is about is, is that we're living in, in an era of a coronavirus where people are enforcing social distancing rules. So lately, there has been a, a wave of uh, regulations allowing online no notarization. So you don't have to go and meet a, a notary, a, a public notary face to face. You can notarize uh, wills and other estate planning uh, documents on the Internet. Again, you want to check your state's laws about this type of uh, notarization requirements. Number three, not destroying previous wills. A will could become invalid, invalid if you do not destroy previous wills. If you have previous wills, it is important that you destroy all copies of them when you create your new one. Now, you can also edit a current will. That's called a codicil. You can have a codicil, meaning that you are editing a current will, but it is just always better. It takes as much time to edit a current will than to create it to create a, a new one. So it's just better to create a new one. You want to avoid any possible situation where your current will is not found and an old will is used in its place. Think about that. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are also having a conversation around uh, the the elements, the factors that could make a will invalid. And I've given you three already. And let's go to number four. But before I do so, if you love the content's clarity and quality so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you are informed in real time whenever we drop a new show. And we drop this kind of shows every single day, rain or shine. Comment below, like this content, and share. Element number four that could invalidate a will, insufficient testamentary capacity. Insufficient testamentary capacity. What is that? The, the, you have in a will, you have something called a testator. A testator is the person making the will. In this case, you. So you want to make sure that when you create a will, you are able, you are of sound physical and mental health. Because one of the common reasons for one of the most common reasons for challenging a will has to do with the mental competence of the testator, again as I said, or the person making the will. In most states, you must meet a basic competency test to create a valid will. This includes understanding the property you own, who your relatives are, your relationship to the beneficiaries you have chosen, what the will says and means. So that means that people with dementia or other mental impairments can still create a valid will. However, they have to make they have to make sure that those four elements I talked about earlier are being taken care of. So they understand they they understand the property they own, the relative the, who their relatives are, their relationship to their beneficiaries, and what the will says it means. Another way to also prevent this is through something called a durable power of attorney so you can have durable financial power of attorney or durable medical power of attorney so you are able to delegate your responsibilities to someone else a trust a trustworthy a trust a trusted person if you god forbid you happen to be incapable of uh, of having uh, mental competence or physical competence so if you are worried that someone might try to suggest you didn't have testamentary capacity you should work with an attorney to provide proper documentation which might include a physician's report or even a video of yourself the idea here is to tell the court and the whole probate to and to, to prove to the whole probate process that you are of sufficient of reasonable testamentary capacity you are able to make a will you are sane you are sound you are you are perfect mentally and physically speaking to take care of your own will number five not following your state's will provisions if you don't follow your state's will provisions your will will be invalidated the court will strike it down each state has its own requirements and preferred language that should be used in the will 
so you want to do some research and find out what your state's laws require generally your will should include the following a statement that it is your last will and testament a clear list of who gets what the name of an executor who will handle the business of probating the will and distributing your property now I've used the word probate so far what, what, what is it what is probate probate in essence is the legal process through which a deceased person's estate is properly distributed to heirs and designated beneficiaries and any debt owed to creditors is paid off in general probate property is distributed according to the decedent's last will and testament if there is one or according to state law if no will exists now you don't want that you don't want the state law to dictate how your uh, assets and belongings will be distributed this is why you need to have a, a last will and testament what is involved in probate probate involves several basic steps so basically you someone is appointed to administer the estate if there is a will the administrator is usually named in the will and is called an executor if there is no will or no executor named in the will the probate judge appoints someone of his or her choice the will is proven in court to be valid so this is the process of validation or that that every will has to go through so state law governs the probate process so it is important to follow state requirements for signatures witnesses and or notaries to be certain your will is valid the deceased person's property is identified and inventoried so and this is done under the tutelage of the probate court most assets cannot be sold or distributed until the probate process is complete and in the last 20 30 40 50 years probate judges have been very 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 strict with that making sure that assets are inventoried they're identified and they're held in a special in a special trust until the probate process is complete properties are appraised any debts or taxes owed by the deceased are paid the remaining assets are then distributed according to the to the decedent's wishes if there is a will or according to state law if there is no will it is important to understand as I was just talking earlier about property being inventoried and, and identified and uh, and held in uh, some kind of uh, trust it is important to under understand that probate process takes a while how long, how long on average according to the American Bar Association the probate process on average takes about six to nine months after a probate case is open with the court it could even take longer if the the uh, the estate is large and the assets and the belongings are very complex for instance if the if the deceased has had properties overseas those properties need to be uh, repatriated or the deceased has in, has investment in very complex business structures so it all depends upon the uh, the deceased uh, estate the nine to six months can vary depending on the court and may take years if there are disputes over legality of the will or distribution of assets in addition there may be costs associated with the probate process such as court fees the responsibility for which may land on the executor of the decedent's will if they cannot be paid by the estate for these reasons Many people get a living trust, which can help avoid probate and reduce the time it takes to settle an estate. Let's talk about the, prop the kind of property that is not included in probate. And by the way, folks, we have uh, we have devoted several shows to the the subject of living trust, revocable and irrevocable. So you want to double check our catalog, our playlist, and you will find a lot of interesting videos about the subject what property is not included in probate there are some types of assets that do not enter probate and those are called non probate assets I'm talking here in life insurance policies that designate a beneficiary or bank account with a payable upon death beneficiary specified as part of a legal contract so if that specification is already made then the money goes to the life insurance proceeds go go to the beneficiary 
if the bank account is uh, marked with a payable upon death beneficiary, uh, if the bank account is marked with a payable upon death information or the, some kind of seal, the money goes to the beneficiary. Real estate held in joint names with the rights of survivorship can bypass the probate processes as well. You can make almost all of your assets non-probate if you place them into a living trust. Probate laws vary by state and it is not always necessary for an estate to enter the probate process upon someone's death. So one of the aims of estate planning is often to afford the probate process in order to have assets distributed to heirs in a timely manner. So if you want your heirs to receive the money in a timely manner, you want to have, you want to have a living trust. So you want to talk to your lawyer or estate planning professional or anybody, any expert helping you if you need help determining the, uh, the steps needed to ensure proper distribution of your estate after your passing. The next and last element that could invalidate a will is fraud or undue influence. So if the court, for instance, finds that fraud or undue influence were involved in the creation of your will, it will be deemed invalid. So common situations could include a non-family caregiver forcing the testator to leave them an, an inheritance, a family member getting the testator to sign a will by pretending it is just a general legal document that needs a signature. So again, if the testator, the testator here is the will creator, is the person making the will. If the person was, uh, was duped, if the person was forced, if the person had had to sign the document under duress, duress means stress or undue influence or, or under tension, then the probate court, the probate judge will invalidate the will. If you plan to make bequest that you think your family might have trouble accepting, it is a good idea to work with an attorney to be sure your will is ironclad. You can also have conversations with your family and document them so that your wishes don't come as a surprise after you pass away. Remember, your will is your final act. So the, the, the minimum you can do is to be sure that no one can contest it and that there is no chance a court could invalidate it. Careful execution of the will with attention to your state requirements can protect your last wishes. Remember, again, when it comes to estate planning and the probate process, this is a state process it is not a federal process it is not a federal legal process it happens at the state level so everything you do when it comes to wills and and living wills and um and the testaments and living trust revocable or ir irrevocable you want to make sure you check the the state regulations the state rules and regulations to make that to make sure everything is fine all right folks this is it for today just want to quickly recap today's conversation what makes a will invalid Creating a holographic will, not having the proper witnesses, not destroying previous wills, having insufficient testamentary capacity, not following your state's will provisions, and fraud, duress, or undue influence. We'll talk to you later. Thank you.